This is THB 11 This Morning. According to a recent USA Today article, the average student loan debt in Arkansas, the average is more than $26,000. That can be much bigger, obviously, if you went to a private university or went to medical school or law mm -hmm. school, and it can impact your ability to buy a home big time. Scott McElmurray with the Bank of Little Rock Mortgage has the answers. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, appreciate it. Good to see you. A lot of questions, and there are some changes. When, right, we think we know the right, answer. Right. Now there are changes to people who have, uh, who have student loans. Explain those. Well, there's been some recent changes in how it's calculated, mm -hmm. right? So it's always been something on a conventional loan that you would calculate the student loan payment. And actually, that's getting a little bit more lenient. So we're required to take the actual payment on a credit report if there is a payment mm -hmm. and use that in your ratios. However, if there's not a payment or if the loan is deferred, you have to use 1% of the student loan balance. So that $26,000 would be $260 a month, which is normally more than you actually right. have to pay. Right. But that's what we have to use in your ratios. So before, it was I could say, I'm not paying anything, I'm deferring this, I want to buy a house, Correct. and you could afford more of a house. Correct. If, as long as the, as the payment was deferred more than 12 months past the closing date, mm -hmm. it used to be you didn't have to count the payment. Right. Now you have to count 1%. And this is going to affect the people. And why is why is this new law in effect? Do you think why is it changed? Uh, well, I think part of it was they analyzed some default rates, mm -hmm. right? And they said of the loans that we made, where there was deferred student loan payments, uh, that was a big factor in people's inability to pay the mortgage past when when those payments started to be required to be repaid. Mm -hmm. It affected their ability to repay the mortgage. And this is the thing where now these people who have these loans, what, are going to have to qualify for uh, less expensive houses? Is that what's going to be the end goal? Yeah, if it is, again, if you're using 1%, that's mm -hmm. normally double what a, what a traditional amortized what you have would to be. Pay, yeah. And so, you know, taking the $26,000, uh, if it's $260, it's, you know, it's forty or $50,000 worth of buying power. And so instead of buying a $150,000 house, you're looking at a $90,000 house correct. Or, or something like that. That's correct. What can people do to finesse this a little bit better on, on the behalf? Well, the, the best thing is if you know you're going to apply for a mortgage, right, is to get your credit report, see what's on the credit report that's being reported by the student loan company. Um, if you're not in a fully amortized repayment, you need to contact your student loan authority, get that paperwork, find out what is it going to be for a fully amortized payment, and see are you better off going ahead and amortizing that payment? Because if we have that information, we can use the actual payment. If there is no information, if it's zero, if you have a, like an income-based repayment plan or you're in deferment status, more than likely we're going to have to use 1% of the outstanding balance of the student loans, all aggregate, which many people have more than one student loan. Right, lots of them, yeah. Talk to a financial expert because a lot of people have questions out there. Buying a house is a big deal. It is. And one other thing that you can do is potentially, if you do have many student loans, get those things refinanced and consolidated. Right, thank you very much.